Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to change the travel on a RockShox 35 fork from 150 to 160 millimeters. We're also going to do a lower service while we're in there, because why not? Um, all of these videos are done with my own time and my own money to buy all the parts and pieces to uh, do the work that I do and try to help you guys out. So a like or a subscribe would be a huge help for my channel. Um, it would really be great. Uh, if you are looking to purchase any of the parts from today's video, it'll be located in the description below the video and then throughout the video as well, I'll put those little things up in the top of the video that link you to other RockShox 35 Gold uh, service videos that I've made in the past. Um, hope you enjoy, hopefully you learned something and we'll talk to you soon. All right, one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen and remove the two bolts from the brake caliper and we're going to come over to the front of the fork we're going to move that little bolt right there that holds the uh, brake line in and then we're going to go up to the headset loosen and remove that and then we'll drop the uh, fork right out Sometimes I forget to do this before I start the whole process and then it's a big mess. I'm trying to hold everything and I don't have enough hands. Now we're just going to remove the axle. And the wheel. You just have to get these loose. Lefty loosey, ready tidy. And the center bolt. Okay, with our bolt out and the rest of the stem loose, we can go ahead and kind of give her a wiggle, little wiggle wiggle. Get her off. Alright, there goes that. This is when everything starts to come apart on you. Put all your spacers. And the forks just slide right out. Okay, so we have the fork out of the bike. And what we're going to do next is we're going to make sure our compression's all the way open. And our rebound knob is pulled out. Mine's been missing for two years. You cannot get parts for this uh, fork at all. Um, seems like they just want you to buy a different fork. Anyways, you want to make sure that your rebound's set all the way on the fast setting. Um, all I did was stick a little, little tiny Allen key up there, and I just rotated it. It's uh, 14 or 15 clicks out. And then we're going to take another Allen key, and we're going to loosen these two bolts. This one, this one. And we're also going to... Take the cap off here, and we're going to take a reading what we have for pressure in there right now, and then we're going to let all the air out. See how much air I have in there? Looks like I'm like 60 psi. Yeah, 61, 62 psi. Okay, now let's start letting the air out. Okay, now we're going to loosen our two bottom bolts. And we want to take these out just a little bit, leave some threads in there. And we're going to loosen the other side. This is our air damper side. And you want to just leave it with a couple threads showing because we're going to whack it with a hammer and that's going to break loose the rods connecting the internals. Okay, so I find it helpful to put one hand up by the dust, dust wiper while you're whacking the bottom. That one went up. There we go. You start seeing oil come down. 
No, you got it. The other side I might need to hit again. Loosen it up a little bit more. Whack the other side a little more. There we go, she's loose now. Pull the rest of the bolt out. Okay, wasn't much oil coming out of that one. Same other side. Oh yeah, there she goes. So from that, what I can tell is that my uh, rebound side, I've been trying to get the, a new rebound damper for this fork for approximately two and a half years. Nobody seems to be able to track one down. Rock Shocks has not come back to any of the dealerships that I've worked with to get a new rebound damper for this 35 gold fork. So it leaks oil at the bottom of that side. It is what it is. I just got to keep... Uh, refurbishing it and working with it best I can until someday I purchase a different fork. Okay, now we're going to pull the lowers off of the stanchions. So, yeah, they broke away free. So it's nice and easy. That's it, they're out. This is your air piston, and this is your uh, rebound damper right there. Your compression damper is up in the top of the fork. And it's an open bath system in there, so it's all just oil hanging out in there, and it goes through orifices in the uh, compression damper and the rebound damper. Um, rebound damper has been leaking for about two years. Love it. So what I like to do is use a Schrader, Schrader puller and just push down on it. Make sure you don't need air in there. And then once you verify that, just to make it easier for pulling the other side, we're going to pull the core out. So that way there's no uh, negative pressure or less negative pressure that's going to keep us from fighting getting the air spring out. Alright, so this is probably the hardest part of the whole job, is getting this little clip off and getting the uh, air shaft out. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take the uh, bolt that came off that side and I'll put it in here. Just throw it in loosely so that way you can push it down out of the way or pull it up out of the way so you can use a pair of ring pliers to get this ring out. These lined up, push in a little bit, squeeze. I get this on the first try. I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket tonight. I got it on the first try. We got to get a lottery ticket. All right, this is the next most difficult part of the whole thing. And it wasn't difficult at all. That's very concerning. Okay, so this is the air shaft from the RockShock 35 gold fork. Um, right here, this is our, our, our all travel spacer that we're going to be removing. So if you remove one of these, it's going to add an extra 10 millimeters of travel to your fork. Whereas if you add another it will remove 10 millimeters of travel. So if I'm at 150 right now, just like this, I remove this travel spacer and it's gonna turn into a 160 millimeter fork. Alternatively, if I were to add another, it would turn into a 140 millimeter fork. Okay, so we're just gonna take this apart, slide this off, and this, this guy, then say goodbye to the travel spacer. Now we're going to put this back on. This one does have a little rubber o-ring on the inside so it's going to give you a little bit of force. This one gets slid back on. And then finally, there you go. And there's your new slightly longer air damper assembly. Okay next we're going to use a little bit of this suspension cleaner on the uh, outer stanchions, and then I'm also gonna blast it in the um, inside of the air damper too.
All right, we're gonna put some of the strand butter. Oh, it's just grease on the shaft here. Make sure all the uh, rubber O-rings get a little bit of grease on them too. Just do that to prolong the life of them. And, you know, this lovely stuff will get everywhere. And we just wanna run it up and down the shaft. You can go to town with this stuff because it's not a, uh, it's not the debonair, so there's no dimple in the fork for air transfer. It only transfers air on, uh, I think it's on top out to equalize your negative and positive air pressure. So it's like uh, it's what you found on all the forks from like, I guess maybe 2017, 2018. And just a little bit O-rings. Looking pretty decent. And you're not hurting anything by putting a ton on in this case. It's okay. Okay, now we're going to push the air shaft back in the air leg or air stanchion. I like to kind of move it around just like that, just little circles. And then we're going to push this whole thing back up in there. Oh, hold on. Before I do that, let's slide all of this a little bit just to make it easier. Okay, everything's kind of in. There we go, it's one click. Now, it's time to get the O-ring. Again, this is usually the hardest part. You want to get your little clippy clips on there and prepare to uh, fight a little bit. Try to make it so you can see. Okay. side almost <laughs> it's gonna take a bunch of tries to get it usually it's not very easy to do at all so what I'm doing is I'm pushing down on this orange part while I'm trying to push this in because this orange part needs to be pushed back far enough to be able to guide this into a little line around the inside of there so watch me struggle <laughs> okay that's one side So close. Almost. Okay, when you get it, you should be able to slide the O-ring down. Or this little clip. I keep calling it an O-ring, but it's a clip. Oh, almost. That's why it's not in yet. It's really close. There we go. That's it. She's in. So, to double check, you need to put your thing in there. Turn it. Make sure it turns, you know you're locked in. And your little plug thing right there, let me see if you can see better. This little section right here on the bottom, there's like a little uh, square in between it. That's gonna be difficult. <laughs> That's the thing you kind of have to push down on to be able to get your clip in. And then once the clip's in, you should be able to just rotate the whole thing make sure it's in place because that's where all your air pressure goes so you want to make sure that that clip is in proper place okay so now we're gonna go I'm gonna remove the uh, dust wipers and the uh, little foam rings in there that are filthy and we're going to put new ones in and then put it all back together so when you're doing this the best place to do it is with an open-ended box wrench and you stick the box wrench in the corner of your wiper seal and push down and then the whole thing pops out. But if you want to, go ahead and remove the springs from <laughs> that I dropped on the ground from each side first because if you go to uh, use your box end wrench on this, you're going to break these springs. And if you want to have spares, 
pull them off first. There we go. One. And then we'll go ahead and do the other side. That's what your dust wiper looks like. Hopefully the lighting's good enough. Sorry, it's getting a little darker out now. That's one. To the other side. Okay. Number two. Out. Okay, so we got a new kit for uh, our new dust wipers. And new foam rings so we're gonna go ahead and uh, get all this together um, sometimes you have to wait for these to show up sometimes they're out of stock for a long time so we were lucky enough to get our hands on some hooray okay so here we go Let's open this up now sometimes these kits come with two different size um, UV foam rings They're like a three millimeter and a six millimeter um, thickness so you just want to match up with what you had previously. And I think in my case, it's these guys right here, the slightly thicker ones. Could be wrong, but it looks like I'm probably right. So we're going to soak these in 15 weight oil. So I got a little thing of 15 weight oil. Uh, you can order it online. I'll put everything in the description. So I'm just going to throw these in the bottom of this and let it soak for a minute. Uh, it's nice to have a little like beaker or something measuring cup it'll help out a lot when you do your damper services later so let's pour a little bit of that 15 in there okay cool and just go ahead and push it down a little bit make sure it soaks it up Okay, we're gonna put our new foam seals in first, and then we're gonna put our new dust wipers in. These are the SKF uh, flangeless um, dust wipers. They work a lot better than the flanged ones that come stock on the fork, so if you change them out, the fork will feel a lot better. Okay, so first things first, put these little, little guys back in there. Fork will be nice and happy having something that's not all beat up and destroyed. Uh, you can either put this in first or second, however you want to do it. I'm just going to do it first. And then go on the next one. Yeah, looking a lot nicer than the old ones. Okay, now it's time to put the dust wipers in. So, a lot of times what you can do is you can get these guys to go just right in just by pushing by hand but we also have a tool that's going to help us set them just in case it's being difficult and while you're doing this work you always want to make sure that you're as clean and neat as possible because anything scratching the inside of that fork might damage it and there it goes right out the side of the fork. Cut! <laughs> <laughs> now there's leaf residue on it. I gotta take care of that. Take two. Use the tool. <laughs> it's been so long since I've done this. Slide the dust wiper up on the tool. Hooray. Then go ahead, get your fork, put it into the fork. Now you can just push the thing in. And it's going to go till it stops. A lot of time you can do it by hand. We're going to give her a love tap with Mr. Fix-It. This is Mr. Fix-It. Just a love tap. That's it. Now she's seated. You go ahead and take the tool out. Dust wipers are in. You just want to make sure that it looks about the same all the way around that lip. And we look pretty good. So we're going to do the other side. Now, once again, put the dust wiper on the tool. You, I'll put a link on it where you can get this from Amazon. It says 36, but it does 35 as well. Millimeter, that's the size of the um, stanchions. But uh, it's kind of a lie with this one. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to push this one in. Same as the last one. A little bit of gusto. OK, 
Okay, time for the love tap for Mr. Fix-It. All right, she is in. Let's pop her out. Okay. Works ready to go back on. Or at least the lowers are ready to go back on. The wiper seals, the SKF fancy wiper seals, come with a little bit of uh, grease on them, but we're going to put a hell of a lot more on there. Just because it's probably the last time I'm ever doing this to this fork. And put this on. It's all covered up. Real nice. There we go. Yeah, just slather it on. Slather. That's a funny word. Yep. Your finger's gonna smell like grease and oil for days after doing this. Well, it's totally doable. I want a lot more. I'm gonna put the uh, little valve core back in. And I'm gonna put like maybe five PSI, 10 PSI worth of pressure in there, just something in there. It'll end up helping me out in the long run. So go ahead and do that. Now, if you get a really fancy core remover, check this out. It's a torque core remover, so you can't break the thing off in there and spend a whole bunch of time and headaches. Pick one up, 10 bucks, probably 15 maybe somewhere but it's a torque uh schrader core remover so now we're going to put the lowers back on the uppers so you want to be really careful that you don't um get your wiper seals stuck and caught in there and do the same thing for the bottom bottom Okay, that's it, I'm on. And then we're gonna slide her up. Okay, come on back here. So we slide it up right until you can see inside here. If you can see inside here. Now if I pull it down a little bit, you're gonna see that's your bolt, right? That's the bolt that connects the lowers to the uppers. Or the internal components so we have to push a bunch of oil into both the lower on this side the air shaft side and the compression side before we put the bolts on so let's get ready and do that so we're gonna put the syringe in the leg sometimes it's a lot easier if you just pull this thing back so more there we go and it may drip out at you a little bit but we're doing pretty good right now okay it's good now we can put the bolts back in and we'll take the top side of the air cap, we'll release all the air again, and we will put some oil in there, put it back together, air it up, put it back on the bike, good to go. Okay, so the crush washers and our regular washers are right here on the bolt. They're really hard to get off once they've been uh, all set up, so hold it in something like a pair of channel locks or um, lineman's pliers, take an Allen key, and just turn the thing out. Make your life a lot more simple than having to fight with it. So, uh, yeah, it can be really difficult to get these things out. I'm putting new... I got a new... I don't even know what I got anymore. I'm tired, but this is coming together. <laughs> Slowly tightening in. There we go. And then we'll do the other one. Now that's the rebound knob, because look, can you see that? See how it's hollow? Yeah, that's your rebound knob. It's hollow. And because I don't have the uh, repound actual knob assembly anymore, the oil just likes to leak out of it. Hmm. Okay. Well, 
So now that I got the two bolts in, just kind of hand tight or whatever, take my uh, torque wrench and go to 60 inch pounds or 6.8 Newton meters. I'm just going to tighten them down now before uh, I flip the fork down to do the oil on the top and have all the oil come out the bottom. So I'm just taking a crescent wrench or open end wrench, adjustable open end wrench to get this thing open. If you're fancy, get the socket if you plan on doing this all the time. This is also how you add bottomless tokens, which I do not use. It's magically done. So now we're going to spray some, I think it's five weight oil in the top of this leg. This is where you'd attach bottomless tokens. Um, this fork doesn't come with any of them. They're these little plastic things. If you have a sag set right for your bike, so you have just enough air pressure so using like 25-30% of the sag of, of your fork while sitting on it. And you feel like you're bottoming out a lot when you're riding on the trails. You can stick a um, bottomless token or two in there. I think it's two max for this fork. It makes it harder to bottom out so you can still run a good pressure that feels good when you're uh, riding. Alright, so we have five weight, two milliliters of it. Um, the RockShox oil is going in to the top of this uh, leg, your air side. So, here we go. That's it. And then we just put the cap back on, tighten it. We can fill it back full of air, make sure everything's working good, and put it back on the bike. So, since we extended the travel on our fork in most cases you're going to have to pull the top of this compression damper out and you're going to have to add a little bit more oil on that side you can go online and look up uh, on sram.com and get the owner's manual for this fork and it's going to tell you the level in i think it's in millimeters from where your tape measure or something bottoms out on the uh, rebound damper up in oil that you're going to need to maintain now i went from 150 to 160 i'm really not worried about adding that little tiny bit of oil because i'm going to be losing it out of my um air leg anyways um so yeah i'm not terribly concerned but if you are concerned and you do this measure the oil level you can take a piece of paper and put it in there or uh or a, a wood dowel Stick it down there, pull it back out, you measure the distance, and you compare it to uh, what it's supposed to be in the RockShox owner's manual, um, which I'll tell you what it is. So it's technically supposed to be 85 to 90 millimeters worth of oil height in this leg, no matter what you have as a setup uh, for your travel amount. Now, one way to test that is to let all the air out this side and then go ahead and cycle your fork down. If you can cycle your fork all the way down to the stand, to the top of your uh, wiper seals, then you know your oil level is not too high. If your oil level is too high, you're not going to be able to get full travel out of this, and you'll have to. What I did last time, I messed it up. I pulled out 10 milliliters of oil at a time. Um, turned out that it was just 10 milliliters over that I was, but uh, that made it so that way the fork functioned again. If you have too much oil in here, it's not going to let you run the whole course of the travel so ultimately i'm not too concerned about that so i'm going to leave that side alone today okay so when everything's all back together good and done fill your fork back up to what you had it set at before okay so when you're done buttoning everything back up just take your fork put it on something that's not terribly hard and just kind of bounce a little bit make sure it feels good good so we'll go ahead and uh put it back on the bike i'm gonna re-grease around the crown race here and just stick it back on the bike well thanks for watching today hope you found the video helpful and informative um if you get a chance go out and ride your bike um and also if you don't mind and you feel inclined please subscribe and like to the channel we'll see you next time have a great day